Okay, picking up right where we left off last time, we made this uh, repeating tile texture, which is uh, you know great for you know a video game or maybe texturing a 3D model. Although each tile is exactly the same. Today we're going to be looking at uh, doing something a little more complicated than just a square uh, tile. We're going to be doing a brick pattern, uh, but we're also going to look at how to make it so that not every brick is repeating, so that you're you spread out your repeating pattern a little bit, so it's less obvious that it's repeating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new image here in GIMP. <clears throat> Control N. I'm going to go rather low resolution, 64 by 64 pixels. Scroll to zoom in here. And now, if you look down, look where my mouse cursor is right now. As I'm moving around, it's giving me coordinates of where my mouse cursor is. Well, I want to split this into quadrants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the ruler up here, click and drag down until I see, whoops, my, I let go of the mouse too early. Uh, click and drag down until I see that I'm at 32. So that's halfway for a 64 pixel image. I'm going to do the same from the left. I'm going to go over here until I get to 32 pixels. Boom. I just divided this into quadrants. Now I am going to hit R, which gives me the rectangular tool, and I'm going to try to select the top half of this. If you don't do it exactly, it's okay. Once you let go, you can move these around, and it should snap to both the edges and the uh, little measuring toolbar that we just pulled down. Now that we have this rectangle selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go select rounded rectangle. And what that's going to do is allow us to round the corners. Lower this number is, the more square our rectangle is going to be. The higher it is, the more curvy the corners are going to be. I'm going to go 20 for mine in this case, which just gives us this nice little curve in all corners of the brick. Next, I'm going to go select and I'm going to say shrink the image. And in this case, one pixel because we're working fairly low resolution with this 64 by 64. Now that we have that, I'm going to choose my fill bucket, make sure I have foreground color fill, and I'm going to select red in this case. I'm going to paste in there and now we have a very flat brick. So what we're going to do next is filters, decor, bevel. We're going to uncheck work on copy and now we have a beveled image which looks a little bit uh, better than um, the flat image we just had. Quickly I'm going to make sure I select the whole top half of this again. I'm going to now control C, control V. I just pasted it. I'm going to hit M to move and I'm going to move it down here and line it up like so. I'm going to hit control V again and paste the other half over here. Now we have a floating selection here. We're just going to anchor it down and now we have a simple brick pattern. Uh, I can control A to select all, control C to copy. I'm going to create a new image. Uh, our tile, our bricks here are 64 by 64. So if I do uh, 640 by 640, that will give us a 10 times that pattern in both directions. And now I can paste and we're going to go to fill pattern and choose the top left corner here, which is what's in our clipboard. And if I paste, there's our brick wall, which we have a very simple brick wall, which would be great for a lot of games if that's the style of the game you want. But if you want to give it a little more texture, a little more realism, we're going to add something to it. So what we could do is here is a picture of a concrete I took with my cell phone of some sidewalk. I could copy this, paste it over top, come up here to choose a selection mode. I'm going to go multiply. And there we go. We have this nice uh, brick pattern. It has a little more texture to it. And I'm going to anchor that down. The problem is it's not seamlessly uh, pattering anymore. Pattering anymore? Is that right? Well, I'm going to double this. I'm going to say, um, what was it? 1280. 1280. And it should be fairly obvious now. That's a fairly busy uh, pattern, so you're not seeing it, but there, there is a seam line there. If you want to make sure there's no seam line, all we have to do is come back here, undo this until we remove that layer, and do the same thing we did in the previous video. Uh, so I'm going to say canvas size, uh, let me, yeah, I'm just going to canvas size 640, 640, put it in there. I'm going to then uh, layer to image size and now filter map seamless. Okay, now if I copy it and paste it on here, and again, we're gonna do a different mode. So we have our floating selection here. We're gonna click up here and click on, let's say dissolve. Now that you've clicked on the mode here, you can start using your arrows and so you can start scrolling through all these mixing options. A lot of them are gonna look horrible. A few that I find for this particular uh, style of project is uh, burn, multiply, Add, darken, uh, not addition, but uh, darken. So there, darken only looks fairly good. Uh, and multiply, I find, looks good. 
linear burn looks good. But you can scroll through these, you know, using your arrow keys once you click on it. Actually, that one looks pretty good. Extract grain looks pretty good for this one. Uh, but now we have a repeating brick, but not every brick is a, the same pattern. And now you're going to go, uh, you know, 10 bricks in each direction before you have a repeating pattern, making it less obvious that this is a repeating pattern. Uh, so let's go ahead and go with this one here. So now I can just anchor that down. And again, we're going to come back here. I can now paste this in. And now it's repeating. Uh, it's actually four copies of it. One here, one here, one here, and one here. Uh, but you don't really see the seam lines, uh, which actually probably wouldn't be too visible in this since it would fall on one of the black lines. Um, but you can do the same thing for like a tile texture like this. If I was to come back and grab this concrete pattern, I can come back to our tile here and paste it. Uh, and if this was the same size, I could do that same mixing mode of either um, darken or multiply, and uh, it would make each tile slightly different, and then it would our repeat would be further out, making it less obvious that we have a repeating pattern. So uh, this is the third in a series of making little uh, tile patterns or seamless uh, textures for stuff. Very basic, but very powerful. Even if you get more detailed, these are the basics that you would need to know for creating stuff like this. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There's a link in the description. Uh, I hope that you uh, visit my website. And uh, I hope that you have a great day. I'm going to real quick go like this, transform. And again, I can go dark and only. So now uh, we've changed the color of our tile a little bit, but you can see that they are definitely, each tile is not repeating. And you actually won't see uh, the repeat, repeating the seam because we have these nice black lines for the tile. Also, one last thing, if you want to change the color of this, once you choose a color, uh, again, you can just go up to colors, hue and saturation, and just start moving the hue bar. If you want blue bricks, if you want uh, you know, lighter blue or purple, whatever brick color you want. And if you just want like a stone color, you can always desaturate, bring the saturation down, and now you have more of a gray uh, tone to it, which looks more like a, a you know, gray black concrete wall. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. And as always, I hope that you have a great day.